My name is Carl Weaver. Good afternoon. I'm a wireless market mobile device specialist. I've spent uh, over 25 years selling mobile technologies to the Chinese uh, Asia Pacific region. Uh, I focus on the OEM and ODM handset manufacturers globally. Uh, I work for a company called Rivets Corp. We provide developer tools to enable the design in of uh, the TEE, the trusted execution environment, to any application on the planet. This is the future uh, of embedded mobile device security. But let me start off by saying basically in 2000, I've been in the state, by the way, since, two, uh, since 1993, after spending a decade uh, learning Mandarin Chinese and working in the microcomputer manufacturing industry in Taiwan. Came to, came to the state in late 92, early 93. I started working with a company called uh, Zetron, which is a land mobile radio communications company. I eventually migrated to digital cellular technologies, and I've been here uh, for the past uh, 20 plus years, except five years I spent most recently from 2008 until 2013 working in China for a company called Gemalto, which is a French, the largest uh, digital security company on the planet. It's called Gemalto. They actually have a booth downstairs. If you've never heard of them, uh, they, the reason why they're here is because they bought Safeguard, uh, SafeNet, sorry, which, to, which provides banking security. So anyway, uh, I was at the CTIA show in 2008, and I was promoting mobile WiMAX smartphones because there was only one HTC had made, had made a mobile WiMAX smartphone. Um, and I was promoting uh, the ecosystem, and I thought WiMAX would, uh, would be interesting. Um, Jamalto was in the crowd, and I usually uh, speak a few words of Mandarin Chinese in most of my public speaking presentations. In fact, I'm giving another one completely in Mandarin Chinese on the rise of um, Apple Pay with Starbucks. Starbucks has announced the use of Apple Pay in their stores, as have they announced when they announce Apple Pay, it means that you need to use EMV codes and the NFC contactless technology at the point of sale. But if you go into a Starbucks right now, none of it is there. You, you don't see it anywhere yet. You will, because there's a whole mig uh, migration shift, a liability shift to use chip and pin and chip and signature in the United States. We're laggards with the last country in the world to use this technology. Even the Canadians are making us look foolish. Anyway, back to 2008. I was at the CTIA show giving a presentation. Jamalto's in the crowd. They said, we need a guy who can speak Mandarin and knows the handset manufacturing ecosystem to go to China to enable this technology called NFC. I said, what's that? I, I'd never heard of this technology, although I've been in mobile, I've been, I'm, a, I'm a wireless person, I've been in wireless uh, over 25 years now. Um, and so I took the gig, I went to China, first day in the office, my Chinese colleagues are going, who is this guy speaking Chinese? He, he already knows how to make re, re, um, meetings by, on his own. He doesn't need our help. He also doesn't even look French. Who is this guy? Jamal is a French company. By 2010, I had enabled the design in of Jamalto's NFC SWP NFC USIM card. USIM is when it's 3G, we say USIM. 4G uses, says UICC for the card, for the SIM card. So um, I was basically in China promoting near field communications, NFC uh, SIM cards, working with NXP and some of the other controller chip vendors, because that's how you design an NFC smartphone. And basically, um, I had been very successful designing it into all the Chinese and Taiwanese um, handset manufacturers in Taiwan and China. They put, and then they said, well, we bought this company called Trusted Logic. I said, what is that? And they said, well, they're promoting, promoting this thing called the TEE. And again, I said, what is that? Um, but again, I speak, read, write Chinese, so I'm the guy who takes the technology and sells it to the Chinese world. Um, and basically, Trusted Logic uh, hired me as a Jamalto employee because they had no legal representation in China. So I had actually two business cards. It looked, that looked kind of strange. Uh, and I was promoting the TEE into China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Uh, and I was successful to make that a standard as I was successful to standardize NFC working with the GSMA, working with uh, all these all these governmental, semi-governmental organizations in the West and in China to enable these cutting edge technologies on smartphones. These cutting edge technologies that I helped to standardize in China are very important because we don't make smartphones in this country. We don't make smartphones here. Even BlackBerry is in what we call North America, Canada. They don't make smartphones anymore. They're making, uh, Foxconn is making their smartphones. So really the key thing is that we need security. We need tamper-resistant security on all these smartphones. This presentation is about security as it applies to mobile payment. So let me, let me move forward. Now, security is very, very important. In fact, I would say you can't really sell a smartphone in the future unless it has embedded mobile device security, because that's what's happening. 
but there are breaches all along the way. There are breaches from the apps developers, and Lord knows, I don't think that we can trust apps developers around the world because there's a propensity to hack. Hacking makes more money than selling illegal drugs. Okay, I'll go throw that statement out. You can go write it down if you're Seattle Times. It's a fact. The other problem is the operating systems. Any open operating system cannot be protected from hackers because hackers develop at least 10,000 malware uh, programs per day. Ask Kaspensky Labs downstairs. You're not going to keep up with it. It's impossible. So you can't protect the open operating system smartphone on a smartphone, tablet, etc. Even a smart TV uses an open operating system smartphone, normally Google, or if it, unless it's Samsung or LG. So the problem is, is that from the operating system, there are security breaches. Now the silicon chip, well that's the tamper resistant security, but now lots of chip vendors are coming from China, uh, but actually the largest chip vendor is coming from, uh, the largest, one of the largest chip vendors is MediaTek. I worked exclusively with MediaTek in Taiwan. Um, and the key is, the problem that we have with all these mobile devices is that the Chinese are making the products, and the Chinese are the largest hackers on the planet. The Chinese, the Russians, and maybe the NSA, who knows? I would certainly hope the NSA's technology is better than the Chinese and the Russians. But the key problem is, is we software developers here in Seattle, we're totally isolated from where the technology is being manufactured. Hello, Houston, Houston, we got a big problem. You developers, you designers, even you Microsoft people, you're sitting back here in Redmond, you think you understand what's going on in the manufacturing ecosystem with all these mobile devices? No, you don't, you're totally isolated from it. Therein lies the problem of security. Is that gonna change? Yeah, it is changing. Some technology will come back to the United States, more will go to India. Happening right now. It's another presentation I, presentation I give called the globalization of mobile technologies. It's migrating because China is very expensive now. Getting back to the problem of security. This is a huge ecosystem, but eventually the technology goes through value-added services into the handset manufacturers who are mostly in China, except for LG and Samsung that are South Korean, um, and BlackBerry, which is Ameri uh, Canadian, and Apple, which is American. All the others are Chinese companies. That's it. And then the operators sell into the vertical markets that we buy our products for. So we have a huge security breach even now. But I'm here to tell you that I'm here to be very optimistic with you, and I'm here to give you a message, you software developers. Let me ask you a question. Who is a software developer? Raise your hand. Come on. Don't be shy, I won't bite you. Okay. So what I'm saying you already know. You already know you can't stop hackers, even though you work for Microsoft or Amazon or Starbucks. You've all been hacked, okay? Whether you want to say it, whether you want to say it publicly or not, you've all been hacked. Gee, Premiere has been hacked, okay? What's the problem? The problem is the hardware is can be can be inflicted with backdoor malware, backdoor viruses, and you're in trouble. The country is in trouble because we don't make devices. And the problem is we outsource software to every single software developer on the planet. Who's monitoring those software developers? Do you know who? I don't think anybody is. Therein lies part of the problem. That's, uh, that's something that I can't control. The technology I will tell you about today, you can control because there are operators in the United States that will adopt not only, of course, the SIM card, but this thing called the trusted execution environment. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I've never heard of this stuff, this must be vaporware. Think again. Think again, the mobile network operators all know the technology, but they don't control the handset manufacturers. They can only suggest that they use the security because the mobile network operators, the banks, the transportation companies, everywhere around the world that wants mobile payment needs the mobile security. Otherwise, everybody loses lots of money from the breaches. Um, I call this the spinning the wheel of mobile payment. Now, Apple Pay came out one year ago, but I want to tell you, 10 years ago, let's take the time machine back 10 years. What was the standard for mobile devices in an enterprise? Blackberry. See this? You know, some of you young guys, do you ever see one of those before? It's like ancient. It should go into the Blackberry Museum, right? These things are still valid. This company is still alive. Why? They have very good security. Very, very good security. They're still around, and they've even come up with an Android smartphone OS. Uh, smartphone now with the Android OS. Well, Android is terrible for security. 
Apple cares about security and privacy. If you don't believe that, after the end of this presentation, you will. Um, but look at the situation. Apple came, Pay came out one year ago. Why was it good? It was using the KISS principle, embedded secure element from NXP for the payment credentials. Tamper resistant, you can't get to it. Encryption from the point of sale device to the smartphone. Okay. But also for the biometric authentication, you're using Touch ID, and Touch ID uses the FIDO Alliance authentication algorithm, which gets stored in ARM's trust zone, firewall environment in the chip. It's, you can't hack that. So they have two forms of security on the Apple iPhone. Every single handset manufacturer is going to implement that, and it's already happening. Let's migrate to Google. Has everybody heard of this, com this organization, this company, believe it or not, not, not this terrorist organization, called ISIS? You ever hear of this organization? Well, this used to be a mobile payment platform uh, that companies like Jamalto helped to put in play the technology from, this comes from Jamalto and some other vendors, uh, and this was a, co a collaboration between AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. They even had a Seattle office. Um, they were doing okay, somewhat, a little bit of a scale of adoption, but they weren't really telling the average consumer when he walked into the store, hey, I want a mobile payment smartphone. Um, the, the salespersons are there just trying to sell any phone because they're just based on commission. They, don't, they can't tell you about NFC, they can't tell you about the security, they can't tell you about the payment platform and about the, the merchants that are using the technology. I actually went into a Jamba Juice and I used um, the uh, ISIS uh, um, SIM card, Jamalto ISIS SIM card, uh, and I made a mobile payment. I actually made a video of that. Um, unfortunately, they changed the name to SoftCard because ISIS wasn't a good name. They changed the name to SoftCard, okay? And then when they became SoftCard, strangely enough, they basically disbanded and they sold the technology to Google. But to this day, nobody knows what they sold to Google. And I would predict that Google hasn't told the rest of the world their entire plans for mobile payment or mobile security, but it will happen very, very soon. So basically, they work with a company called Simply Tap because Simply Tap provides what we call host card emulation technology, which is basically taking the payment credentials, bypassing the SIM card, taking the credentials through the CPU into the cloud to provision a token and with token uh, service provider and token services to provision a token for the payment data, your credit card data, in the cloud and then back down into the open operating system of the smartphone. So that's actually what's happening right now with, with Google Wallet, Google Pay. It's using a combination of the wallet, combination of host card emulation, um, and of course they're calling it Android Pay now. So it became from, went from Google to Android, Google Pay to Android Pay. It's all the same thing. Google operating system from 4.4 on, KitKat operating system uses this technology. So that's what Google is doing. We know what Apple is doing. Google is trying to do the same thing from the software side, and they partner with who? HTC, Huawei, ZTE, um, LG, Samsung, all these, eight, all these um, Google Android smartphone manufacturers. Now, I want to talk about what Samsung has done, because it's really cool. Samsung has enabled this technology they bought from a company called Loop in Massachusetts, um, which provides this thing called MST, Magnetic Transaction Security, Magnetic Security Transaction, or something like that, MST. This is cool. This basically, um, you know on your credit card now that's not chip and pin, it uses a magnetic strip, you swipe it? Well, they've simply taken that te technology and they've embedded it into a chip on the handset. And that technology, they sold to Samsung, Loop, sold that to Samsung. And now Loop is part of Samsung. Um, and Samsung uses NFC and they use this MST technology. So actually, with a Samsung smartphone, you never need to pull out your credit card ever again because your magnetic strip technology is supported and NFC um, and even biometric authentication is supported. So actually, Apple, uh, Samsung Pay is really, really cool. It has that edge over Apple, actually, it does. So that's what Samsung is doing. Alibaba and Alipay, Alibaba is a, is a push Jack Ma. They just put an office here in Seattle to, uh, to pilfer Chinese engineers to work for them. Uh, to compete with Amazon and Microsoft. Well, anyway, this is Cloud Central. Seattle is the world's largest cloud center, and rightfully so, thank goodness. Um, now, the key here, though, is Alibaba has, a, has a, a mobile wallet and a payment platform called Alipay, and they've invested in this company called Mainju, which is just a Chinese smartphone manufacturer, pretty good one, not bad. I visited them recently, they're in Zhuhai. 
Um, so that is what um, uh, Alipay and Ali, uh, Alibaba and their Alipay mobile wallet are doing. And it's a whole platform, it's a payment platform. In fact, it's a third party payment platform. It's the largest third party payment platform on the planet. It's actually bigger than uh, M-Pesa in, in, in Kenya. Okay, we also have PayPal. Uh, is PayPal going to use NFC? Maybe someday down the road they will. And then we also have the Bitcoin community, which is really cool. Because Bitcoin, the whole cryptocurrency and the whole blockchain technology, if it had more security, it actually could be legitimate. And it's becoming legitimized. But this presentation is not on Bitcoin. Um, I, what I just said, I kind of explained here. You have on the extreme left, the SIM card. Do you know that the SWP, which stands for Single Wire Protocol SIM card, is still the global standard for mobile payments? Apple Pay is not yet the global standard for mobile payments. You might find that to be strange to believe. The fact is that the SIM card, SIM-based security, is the standard for mobile payment. But in this country, ISIS soft park is gone. What are the operators doing in its place? You know what they do when you walk into the store and you say, I want a, I want a mobile payment smartphone. They say, just buy Apple, Apple, just buy Apple. Well, I have Android, I don't like Apple. Well, go download the wallet, go here, download the wallet, and then, well, it's not secure, number one. Number two, Android and Google have not told you ultimately what their ultimate plan is for the security of the payment credentials and the token. We'll talk about tokens in a moment. So what's going on? The SIM card is still the standard because the SIM card is very, very secure. You can't, it's tamper resistant. You can't hack the SIM card. I know you've heard, you've seen on YouTube people hacking this and that. You can't hack the SIM card. Otherwise this country would be, and every country would be in terrible, terrible danger from terrorists and hackers around the world. The SIM card is the most secure element. It is what the operators use as their tool to make money. So it's still a standard. Um, you also have Apple Pay, which I explained to you. They own the entire platform. Do you know that the SIM card that when you buy your Apple, Apple 5S, or I think starting from six, the SIM card does not come from the operator. Did you know that? It doesn't come from them, it comes from Apple. Is Apple is moving full, further and further to promote this concept of the soft SIM, which is they provide the SIM, the operator pro provisions it with their, the, every operator has a handset profile for their network, okay? Apple provides the SIM now, the operators just willingly agree because they have no choice, Apple's too powerful. Everyone wants the iPhone. So this concept of the, of the soft SIM is already going into the uh, iPad mini, when you buy it, you can provision from the operator. You don't. You can just buy it. It has a SIM card. You don't have to worry about the SIM card. You just go to the operator and say, "Hey, turn my, turn on my 3G or 4G connectivity for my iPad Mini." Same thing is happening with the SIM card for the smartphone. Because Apple, this is Apple's plan. Uh, um, well, I would be concerned what Apple's future plans are. Samsung, I explained, they're doing a different program in Europe than they are in the United States. Android, uh, as I said, Android host card emulation and Google Wallet. These three things here are all combined together, but they haven't made an announcement how they will protect the, the tokens. So as of now, I think Android Pay is not so secure unless they tell us something further. Samsung, yes. Apple, yes. Oh boy, I'm new to the black to I to uh, Max. By the way, let me just go to escape. Oh boy, here we go. View. Oh, slideshow. There we go. All right. So, what is a smart card? Actually, it's important for you to understand these technologies. A smart card is a tamper-resistant containerized area in the SIM card to provide your sensitive information. This is where the operators put their payment credential data in the mobile network networks operators provisioning of the mobile payment smartphone. And there are basically a few different standards for these smart cards. And by the way, these smart cards are, as we know them, they're cards, they're contact, and they have one standard. The standard is ISO 7816, but contactless, which you don't see many of. You don't see many of those. You only see right now, you see 
a chip and pin card. Do you realize that around the world, these are contactless. You just touch the point of sale device. You don't have to swipe, you don't have to insert. But actually when you go to Target, when you go to Home Depot now, they're starting to institutionalize that. Push Starbucks to do the same, because they need to do it. That's more secure. Anyway, um, with the contactless protocol, it's actually, um, it's actually 144, uh, 14443 standard. I don't know how to get that away. Let me just see if that does it. There we go. Uh, there we go. Um, and NFC only works in one frequency. It's not RFID. It's a kissing cousin of RFID. When they say NFC and RFID, they are not the same thing. NFC only works in one frequency, 13.56 megahertz frequency. Um, now, the secure element, as, a, as I say, is going into different form factors. So it's in the micro SD. It's embedded, which is what Apple does and what Samsung's doing. NXP is the leading vendor in the world. And it's also in the SIM card. So the secure element is in three form factors. Micro SD, uh, embedded into, the, into a controller chip with NFC, and then the, then the SIM card. Those are the three ways you get the secure element. And then you can store whatever you want you, in there. You can actually store all kinds of information there, but it's limited. The SIM card is going away. The SIM card is going away. Let me say that twice. <laughs> secure element and NFC phone architecture. All right, so it's very simple. To design an NFC phone, which was my job to educate the handset manufacturers, is you need an NFC SIM card. Jamal had the first one in the world. You also need an NFC controller chip, NXP, which, form, which is formerly Philips. NXP provides the best one in the market. NXP is selling to everybody. Uh, and then you need an antenna, and then you need a connection from the controller chip to the SIM card. That's called, that connection is called SWP. Jamal Tool invented it, standardized that with the GSMA. It's a global standard. That is the global standard for mobile payment on a smartphone. If nobody's ever told you that, this is a fact. But So you need a controller chip, there's a wallet, the UI that accompanies a, a mobile payment smartphone with NFC, and you have various protocols which are legacy. You have a smart operating system. Actually, BlackBerry is so sophisticated. They came up with uh, by, uh, avoiding the SIM card way back in 2011. Uh, nobody adopted and of course they also have a, uh, an OS um, a secure element OS here's what you really need to know Apple Pay is only using card emulation mode right now that's all they're using they're not using peer-to-peer -peer, which is cool what can I do with peer-to-peer -peer? I can walk up to my ATM with my Apple Pay one day deposit withdrawal money from my smartphone at the point of sale because it'll have a controller it'll have a NFC chip on one side NFC is a master slave situation once both sides have to have the technology for it to work, but it only works within four centimeters of each other and it's contactless. But I can do the same thing with my credit card. So I can walk up to an ATM machine with my credit card and do the same thing as my smartphone. Now, that's what we call peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. But Apple is using one mode. It's called card emulation mode. They're emulating a smart card, which is the same thing as saying they're emulating a credit card. The other mode is what we call read-write mode. And that's really cool because has anybody been to pa Paris lately? So in Paris, the underground, the metro, uh, and even in London, they have smart posters. And they have NFC with the smart posters. So am I, as I come up from the London underground or the, or the Paris metro, I can take my smartphone, if it's NFC enabled, not from Apple, but from all the Android vendors, I can actually touch a poster and get the map right on my smartphone. Isn't that cool? This is not rocket science. It's just not in America, per se. Sound Transit, where are you guys? Um, so that's read-write mode. You can also make a tag, and you can write to the tag, and attach that tag to my PC here, which says, if lost, please contact blah, 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 blah. So simple. Why aren't we doing it? We're in laggards for payment and security and NFC, because NFC does not mean National Football Conference, go Seahawks. It doesn't mean not for commerce, doesn't mean not for commerce, right? And it also doesn't mean it also doesn't mean no functional clue. It means near field communications, and it's very, very important. Jump forward. Now, I often tell people, I know mobile payments, I know mobile payments. I'm going online and I'm using my smartphone. That's remote mobile payment. That's what Alibaba is doing. That's what PayPal is doing. But proximity mobile payments use NFC, near field communications. So guess what? If I were to tell you that the proximity side here, contactless mobile payments will be a larger revenue generator and you will use it more than you do going online and making a payment. Would you believe me? Would you believe me? Of course. Thank you. 
<laughs> it's a fact. It's a fact. Because when I use Sound Transit, I may take Sound Transit and I need to use my Boca card. I may want a coffee before going to the office. I can now, for, with my Apple iPhone, soon, use NFC or, see it's not just Apple Pay. Once you have EMB code enabled at the point of sale, it's a contactless credit card or debit card or maybe even Starbucks loyalty card will happen in the future. Who knows? It's the ability to have lifestyle applications using near field communications on your smartphone and on your credit card. Because credit cards don't just aren't just for credit or debit. <clears throat> Actually, they have something called value added transit cards, which do what? In places like Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Singapore, you can actually buy other things with your with your subway card. You can top it up with a fifty dollars or so, and you can buy coffee using your card. You don't have to pull out your smartphone if that's too much trouble. So, actually, one way to get to mobile payments is by first adopting this contactless uh, transit card, which is what's happening in Hong Kong. Buy that home. You ever hear of buy that home? It's very very famous. How about in Taiwan, Yo Yo Ka? In China, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen all have this capability. In, in Shenzhen, they call it Shenzhen Tong, which is you put, you put money on the card, and you can go into a 7-Eleven and buy things in addition to going into the subway. It's really cool. Sound Transit, we need, well, actually, what has Sound Transit done? They've actually put the Sound Transit app on the UW, pass, the UW ID, right? Did you know that? Who's formerly UW recently graduated? Oh, we're all old here, aren't we? Um, <laughs> So anyway, that's how mobile payment works. You have remote mobile payment and you have proximity mobile payments. Um, I talked to you about this host pod emulation. If I were to tell you that this is what Microsoft's strategy is, Microsoft wants to use cloud Azure services and they've already adopted host pod emulation as has every Android smartphone. As is every banker in this country developing a mobile app that supports host card emulation and NFC, but well, it's the same thing. Host card emulation is part of the usage for NFC. Um, and so basically what we have is pro provisioning your mobile payment data in the cloud and then bringing it back down onto the smartphone in the open operating system. But there's no security on that. The security is not enough. But actually, Visa, MasterCard, American Express right now are using tokens instead of the actual credit card data for digital currency and when they're doing electronic payments. So you may get the physical credit card, but did you realize that this is a, they're using tokens now? When they put this technology into your smartphone, it's a token. They scramble the data. Um, it's a 16-digit token number that's scrambled, taken from your credit card data, your credit card number. They scrambleized it to use an Apple Pay, and that's part of the EMV code standard as well. So the point-of-sale device knows.